Welcome back to another NoCode.Tech video and in this one I'm going to be showing you how you can build your very own version of Uber. Now we're going to be using Adalo which is one of my favourite mobile app building tools and we'll be looking at a few unique and interesting features here. Not only will we be taking payments, working with maps and using some extra add-ons like the countdown timer, we're also going to be building an app that is in fact two different apps. See, obviously Uber is a service where you can request a taxi ride and then have the rider come to you. So we need an app not only uh, on the rider side, you know, as somebody who wants to request a taxi ride, but we're also going to need an app for the driver. And in this app in particular, the driver is going to be able to see all the available rides. They're going to be able to accept a ride depending on whether or not they're happy with the pickup time and drop off time. And of course, they'll be able to take the ride, go pick up the user and leave reviews and ratings as well. So there's going to be a few interesting little quirks here. First of all, let's talk about um, a couple of the limitations. Um, firstly, Adalo does not have support for dynamic maps. What I mean by a dynamic map is you can't currently show a map which, you know, takes maybe two points on there and then draws a line in between them. In other words, you're not going to be able to show the exact path of the driver on his way to the, the ride requester. Um, now, I've worked around that a little bit. What we're going to do across all these screens is show the pickup location and destination. That will then update when we find a driver to show the driver's current location. We'll use a timeline uh, the whole way through for the user to be able to um, uh, kind of count down exactly how long it's going to be until they get there. And then, of course, uh, when the user has been picked up and they're on their way to their destination, we'll show that in the map as well. So we'll always show the beginning and entry, or sorry, an ending point um, of the trip. We just can't draw that on the map in real time. And there's another limitation there that prevents that, which is at the minute, Adalo cannot access the GPS of your phone. In other words, it cannot get real time location information. Now, the good news is this is one of the top things on Adalo's uh, wish list, which you can find at ideas.adalo.com. In other words, GPS access is the most requested feature by Adalo's users, and that tells me it's probably going to come along really, really soon. The good thing about the way this app is built as well is the minute they bring out GPS, you'll be able to add that on here without having to do a major rebuild of your app. You'll be able to just quickly plug it in, replace the user's manual GPS entry, um, and indeed, if dynamic maps become available as well, we're already using uh, Google's API to get exact uh, you know, address and direction, uh, loca I guess information, locations, whatever you want to call them. So if GPS does come online soon, which I expect it will, you'll be able to add that and we'll add a video on as well well and indeed if dynamic maps become available too we'll also add a video on how you can update your app to include that one other quick limitation or um, a feature depending on your point of view a download doesn't support the ability to refresh a page based on an action to give you an example on this page here called a wait and pick up um, we've got conditional visibility on these two pieces of text. In other words, although it says looking for driver and driver on the way, in reality, when the user's actually using the app, only one of them will show up. At first, it's going to say looking for driver, and then once a driver selects the ride and accepts it, it will then pop up saying driver on the way. We can, at the minute, automatically tell the user on this page that that's happening. We can send them a notification, but we can update this text in real time. Instead, we need the user to hit this little refresh button occasionally just to find out where their driver is. And what will happen is it will load this refreshing screen for a split second. It will then jump back and that will cause the page to reload. So a little bit of a pain that we have to do that workaround, but I call it a feature because it's a really, really handy little trick that you can use in plenty of other Adalo builds as well. So let's have a little bit of a look at a couple more things. First of all, we're going to be using a tool in addition to Adalo. It's called Integromat, and it's essentially a canvas-based workflow builder. Um, I can drag and drop various different uh, you know, services, APIs, integrations onto this canvas, and then I can drag and drop them around to create the workflow that I want. Um, this is really, really handy not just on Adalo, but on any app builder, because you can use it to extend the the power and functionality of, you know, be it Adalo, be it whatever app builder you're using. And so what we're going to do here is use this to get direction information. 
and we're going to use that just to grab essentially how far if, if a user puts in the pickup address and the and the um the destination address how far away is it how long is it going to take to get there how many miles is it going to cover so we're going to use integromat to get that information rather than go and worry about the entire you know api call we'll use integromat's integration and we'll use adalo's custom actions to grab that direction information, use it to calculate pickup time and drop off time, and eventually let the driver know where to go. Sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. I'll show you how this tool works in a separate video. Um, and so just to give you an exact idea of, of, of how the kind of logic works here, I threw together this little flow chart here. So the main part to pay attention to is the top. The user is going to sign up as a rider. They're then going to set their home address. So that might be 64 Zoo Lane, for example. Um, the user then at any point within the app can request a ride from their current address to some sort of destination address. Now, the home address will be saved the first time the user logs in. So, you know, that's always going to be the default. But of course, if they're not at home, if they're in the middle of the town, for example, then, you know, they might want to change their address that they're going to be picked up from. That's okay. Our app can handle that. So they'll put in uh, their current address, a destination address. Our app will then, via Integromat up here, it will go to Google's um, distance API. It's actually called the Directions Matrix uh, API, I believe. Um, but that sounds a little bit more techy. Um, but we'll go to that API. We'll find out how long the trip will take. Um, and once we've got that information, we'll return that to Adalo. And the user will then be shown a map with both the pickup and the destination location, at which point we're roughly around here, awaiting pickup. Um, at that point, of course, the new ride now becomes available in the driver app. And when the driver um, uh, accepts, you know, the user can keep refreshing the page. And when the driver accepts, they'll be able to see a driver has been assigned. The pickup time um, will be updated to reflect where they're coming from. And of course, the user um, will then, when the driver arrives, they'll receive confirmation of the pickup from the driver. And at that point, we just get a nice easy screen that says, you're on your way, you arrive at an estimated time, there's your total fare. And uh, at any point, they can just hit finish and rate the driver, give them a, a one star, two star, three star, etc. So that's how the flow is going to look. And then from the driver's side, um, essentially, the user can sign up as a driver. They can set their home address again. Um, and then, you know, they'll kind of see this screen. Let me just show you here. They'll see this screen, uh, which is almost their equivalent of the home screen, where not only does it show them their current address, but it will also show uh, the various different rides that are available. And when they select a ride, they'll be able to come in, see the details and hit accept. And so what happens is they'll accept the ride. They'll drive to the pickup address in real life. Um, they then have a little button right here where they can say the user's now picked up. These two are set on conditional visibility, so the only option when the driver first hits this screen will be user picked up. And then on the second, um, or sorry, once they've done that, they'll be able to hit user dropped off the second button. And once they've dropped off, they'll immediately be taken to the rate the rider screen. So it's really, really simple. Um, it seems a little bit complex when it's first laid out, but actually... Um, all we're doing is simple request, drop off, uh, pick up, done. So with that in mind, let's jump on to the next video and we're going to do something a little bit unconventional where we're going to build the user interface first and then we'll come to the database. I always, almost, you know, almost always recommend against doing that. And, um, you know, I usually say in the no code fundamentals that the best thing to do is start with your database and work from there. But in this instance, I think the data will make a lot more sense to you if I show you the interface first. So we'll do that and then we'll put our database on and then we'll start to add all the other functionality that makes this app work.